haven't laughed yet. Uh, I'll In wait. Five, four, three, two, and go. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tim. Tim, I think Stefan's uh, had quite a long weekend. Is he okay? <laughs> I don't know. Oi, Stefan, we're live. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to think so. Hold. <laughs> you know, there really was a piece composed by a guy called Dieter Schnabel. Did you ever come across him? Yeah, yeah. With Ensemble Modern, we played this. It was scored for a chamber ensemble in, you know, revolving Four chairs. Occasions. It yeah. was hilarious. It was. No, really... we also I did I did this um, a couple of times. We did play this um, Vinko Globoka uh, piece, and it's for woodwind quintet. But the horn and the, the bassoon are outside most of the time, <laughs> and the three others like have revolving chairs, but they also have like to change instruments and oh. do things like that and play on it. Yeah, it was really not but good for the really, Oh, it's really funny, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good piece. Very good. Handsome Tim, how was your weekend? It's good. It was um, a little bit busy. We had Anzac Day on Saturday. So you were sort of, streaming like, Anzac Day what, at the end of our party. I was. I had to do. So we had the dawn service where I do the bugle calls. And I was helping stream a couple of different events around the country. So it was it was horn party, nice. horn party, horn party, then ceremony, ceremony, ceremony. Ceremony. <laughs> yeah, our horn ceremony. party was ended by someone. Yeah, you, did you realize what you did, Tim? I've got to tell all you guys this. This is rather <laughs> hilarious. So when we when we switched off the live button from the horn party, of course, we partied on a little bit. Um, and we wanted to actually have a really nice long horn party. But Tim had switched Eric Ralski to administrator and not one of us. So when Eric left... And he had a meeting. Yeah, yeah he had everything just went... Psh, <laughs> and it was gone. <laughs> Stefan Yatilski's red wine, gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all make mistakes, you know. Too bad. Just like the wrong person in charge of the party this time. It was okay. Yeah. And and Stefan, you sent me something very nice over the weekend. Yes, I'm Were cooking. Ah, you... oh, okay. What do you think, guys? I think we should do a hangout with Stefan Dora's favorite recipes in the kitchen. What makes you big and strong as a horn player? Because he, this guy cooks amazingly well. And um, what do you think? Let us know what you think about that. Not strong, um, but big. <laughs> Strong, <laughs> yeah. You said big belly, great belly makes a great sound. You said. Yeah, I'm, I'm working. I do some workout now. It's getting too much. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> um, right. Lovely to see where you're all watching from. Sveta is with us from Oslo. Um, amateur shipping is Berlin West End. Luis says greet, greetings from Mitte. Which Luis is that? Ah, it's, uh, Matthew from Hong Kong. My goodness, this is great. Um, greetings from Belgium. Stefan is so funny, says Marlies. That's very, very true. Thank so you. today we are talking about masterclasses. Now, for Tim and I, we have a very special masterclass story to start off with, don't we, Tim? We do. That's how we met Sarah, wasn't it? Back I'm very in... nostalgic. What did you think oh. when you were told to live stream this strange horn player? I thought, French horns? Really? Horns? Do I have to go and live stream them? <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? Where that was... was it? Melbourne and M, Australian National Academy yeah. of Music. Ah. And Saul Lewis, who I, I, I was visiting and playing with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra at the time, he said to me, I never live streamed, you know, the only thing I'd done was a, that um, YouTube Symphony Orchestra thing, but I never live streamed a masterclass. And now it's completely normal, of course, but Saul said, right, we're going to live stream your masterclass on, you know, tomorrow at Anna. I was like, what? How? When? He said, yeah, I've got this guy. He's quite good at it. He's a tuba player. I was like, Ooh, oh, dear. And then got there, and there was Tim, handsome Tim, running around, and uh, yeah, we live streamed it. Yeah. It was yeah, quite an event. Went and quite well. Yeah, it did. And here we are. How many years ago? <sighs> when was it? That was what six years ago. Yeah, -ish? not that long, but long enough. Stefan's uh, long enough. Yeah. The what are the stuff. earrings? <laughs> oh, what are your earrings? Look, they're British earrings. They, oh. I, put, I put them on today because I, I'm missing my mum and my sister and my nephew Angus and I just we found out yesterday that if you want to go to England um, you have to stay in quarantine for two weeks it's now official and you have to stay in quarantine if you want to come back to Berlin so I'm not going to be able to see them for a long time so I'm just a little bit missing them so I wore these in their honour today God save the Queen right. I've got the German underwear no just kidding <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, everybody, if you're watching on Facebook and you have some juicy questions for us, get over to the website, write them here because I can see them a lot easier on, on my iPad here at home from the website. Um, if you're otherwise, write in and tell us where you're watching from. We love to hear that. Oh, bye, Tim. He's left. He's gone. He's left. He's, he's left. And um, we're talking about masterclasses today because uh, Stefan and I were thinking, okay, how can we how can we help? What topic should we touch? I know you've been writing in all sorts of um, um, questions for other things, but today it's all about masterclasses. Stefan, you give many masterclasses a year, don't you? No, I'm not so many. I, I mostly okay. do, do give them when I am somewhere playing as a solist or chair music, or sometimes even with the orchestra, I do give a short, like they call it in Japan, they call it clinic. Yeah. So usually it's, yeah, it's, it's not really, you know, masterclass. It is a masterclass in one day or in two hours or three hours or something. So it's um, sometimes it's just half an hour or 20 minutes for, for a couple of players. And then I try to give a bit of motivation. Um, it's very hard to, to um, actually talk about real, you know, ambitious problems or, you know, uh, details. But sometimes it's just helping them to get a bit, yeah, a fresh idea. What do you find is the biggest problem in a masterclass situation? Um, the, the, the biggest problem, of course, is that you don't have, you, you don't know anything about, usually you don't know the people who are playing for you. So you have not, you know, if you, you, see, you see problems immediately, most of the times, and then to quickly realize them and try to be helpful in 25 minutes, half an hour, that is not a lot of time. And yeah, it just can be a little thing of motivation not not really like solving problems in there most yeah. of the time i find my what i find is the biggest problem for most people doing the master class is that they literally have 15 20 minutes to play in front of what's usually a, an audience of only horn players um and they get up and the first 10 minutes they're so nervous you can't do anything with them and their air has stopped and margaret has written in a question which i think we should address because this is a global masterclass problem um she said i find it difficult uh, difficult to use enough air when playing in front of others i'm always told to use more air but it's challenging for me to do so any advice i know exactly what she means because we we can see that, that the players aren't using their air so we tell them to use the air but when you're nervous your body often just shuts down do you encounter this as well Absolutely. A lot of times. Yeah. People, the things when you get nervous, usually like it's like your neck and, and you get in this position where animals would like, mm. yeah, like this. And so everything is like really tight. The only advice I can usually give there is just try to breathe with a very open mouth and relax the shoulders, get your head up so that you sorry. It will feel very like a very open and, and like a, a you can be vulnerable in a way so that, that this doesn't really give you a nice feeling. But if you have like done a couple of breathings before, um, that would help a lot. And I think usually what what is not done enough all the time is play in front of people before the masterclass, even if it's only a couple of friends, just yeah. make a simulation of the of the actual situation. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. I think this, um, you, you see them walk onto the stage and usually I can see how they're going to play by the way they walk onto the stage. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, no, no, absolutely. I mean, it's the same. I'm not, I'm not criticizing that at all because I'm at the same. I can feel how I'm about to play when I walk onto the stage, you know, and sometimes even just a little thing, a little trick, like try this now at home, putting your shoulder blades back. Just try that. And all um, of a sudden, yeah, as if someone's pulling you up here and shoulder blades back, it just opens everything up. And this is a very unnatural thing for your body to do when it's feeling nervous, because our, all our instincts want to do this. But uh, every time, yeah, exactly. And every time you do this, it's bad for horn playing, you know? No, absolutely. So another little trick I, I sometimes try myself stuff on is when I'm feeling nervous on the stage in the Philharmonie, I, I try not to, you know, I, I get the blinkers on, you know what I mean? And I, I, I don't, well, you probably don't, but um, at this, <laughs> and I don't want to look, I don't want to look at anything because I'm just thinking, oh, and I force myself to open my eyes and really, t you know, not necessarily look out into the audience, but just get this feeling of openness back again. Because once again, that, you know, getting in like that, it's just, just a question of staying open. And if you can 
trick your body into feeling a little bit more open, that really does help the nerves and the air as well. Because you can't breathe well if you're all hunched up. It's just yeah. Impossible. And then the air's gone, and then after two minutes, the lip is gone because you don't support anything, and so you build up everything in here and, and don't use the yeah all the muscles you have in your body to play yeah. to play the horn. Yeah, um, Alexandra Honigsberg. Hi, Alexandra, New York. She's just written Sarah's masterclass from Juilliard in 2019. The biggest problem was that everyone so was so good that you and Julie didn't have things to fix. It, it was really true. Isn't that awful, Stefan? When someone comes on and plays, and you're like great go away <laughs> go away <laughs> of course we'd rather have that it's also nice if we have something to fix that's you know that's that's fine but also then i love people who really don't have problems but then you can start talking about music about phrasing about you know and then you don't have to you know try to fix things all the time that's exactly. nice Absolutely. Masterclass is to get to get to the point where the person is calm enough so that we can talk about the music. That usually takes, you know, 10 minutes and then or 15 minutes and then they have five minutes to talk about music. That's sometimes frustrating as a teacher. But if if we work on our performing before we go into a masterclass, you know, and get our head in the right space. And um, sometimes people are so afraid of me and I, I, I get I'm like, it's only me. I'm not scary. Yeah. <laughs> I, he says I am. I'm so not scary. You have the most scariest low notes in the world anyway. <laughs> that Even is line, all the lines will run away. Can I have this on tape? That is the biggest compliment I think you've ever paid me. Speaking of low notes, we've got a very good question. Ah, Heather has said, remember, everyone wants you to succeed. That's a good thing to remember, too, because a lot of people get up in front of a masterclass audience and look like they think everyone's about to spit on them or something. But actually, you know, if I've listened to a masterclass, I've wanted that person to do so well. You know, it's we're all in the same boat. Yeah, I'm also just saying, you know, why are you nervous? They're all horn players. They have, yeah. you know, they all know the trouble. So yeah. easy. Yeah. It is all right after the first few minutes. But the problem is, as a horn player in your profession, we've only got that first chance to get it right. So this is yeah. masterclasses. You learn, you know, you learn a lot from them. It's to get it right on the first go instead of. Da, 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 da. Oh, moment. Let me just do it again. <laughs> Did you take any master classes? Just, just out of curiosity. Out Actually, of not, not many because I got my first job very young. Um, I wish I had taken more because I was, I was a very big scaredy cat. Uh, at college and um, I did one or two uh, brass platforms we called it and my knees shook so much that I never went back and nobody made me go back and I wish they had it would have made a lot of my journey a lot easier if I'd had that practice playing in front of people I didn't have a horn class because I was the only one in my year there was no one else to sort of bounce ideas off so my my situation wasn't ideal I had to I've, I've never felt very comfortable playing you know, solo solo pieces with piano is a little bit like my trauma, <laughs> to, to be honest. It really is. Um, but there's a good question that's come in from Artur and Mathieu. Artur and Mathieu, Mathieu says, how do you select pieces for the masterclass? Artur writes, do you prefer students in masterclass to play Mozart, Strauss, Neuling, which students always need to play? Or are you tired of those and would rather listen to something else? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, a lot of times I see students, they pick pieces that are sometimes just too hard for them. And then it's really, really, really difficult to work on them because actually there's the ability, ab abilities are not there to, to actually, you know, to get something out of musically. So you have just to problem solve. And then it's like, ah, uh, maybe, you know, don't, don't play Viva Concertino. Let's do Mozart three or let's do Hallelujah. Know, doesn't it doesn't have to be Mozart, but you know, it could be it could be whatever nice pieces they are, bit on sonata. Oh, you know, there's a lot of things, but then they you you stand there and say like, Oh, what can I do with that? Yeah. Hallelujah. I totally agree with that. When people bring me things like Weber Concertino, when you you can tell at the beginning they haven't practiced the notes or I it's not necessary to play the hardest piece you've ever found in a masterclass. Play something you feel comfortable with, but that you think could be improved. And it's not the teacher's or the professor's job in a masterclass to teach you a piece. My heart always sinks when I get to that. Don't you agree, Stefan? It's Absolutely. No, it is. It is then 
Um, and people don't sometimes come with like Chumal Adagio League or whatever, and they've never played it with piano before. And then it's like, oh, the the, the poor pianist is just guessing where where, where she or she or he wants to has to play with him because he's like reading <laughs> it and not knowing where the piano really needs his you know little yeah. keys and yeah. yeah. Cute. My mom, my mom just joined the stream. Mom, I'm wearing my earrings for you because I miss you. Hope you she just joined the stream. And oh yeah, we were talking about that. sitting with his knees closed. That's a long story. Uh, <laughs> um, back to business, and um, we'll tell you that story another time. Um, yeah, there's a. a if I could just add to the repertoire choice. Um, my heart also sinks when someone brings something so obscure that I've never heard it. And I, it's too difficult to sight read, you know, and it's something I, I can't play back to them. I'm always happy if you can demonstrate a bit in a masterclass. But, you know, if it's too obscure, then I get, you know, it's hard. It makes our life harder. <laughs> You're good at sight reading. There's nothing too obscure. No, okay, if you say so. But there's a good question. What's that? What is that? Oh, gosh. Bop, 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 bop. What is that? Brad Dean. Ah, ba, ba. Is that is that the eight horn eight yeah. horn piece? I yeah. thought the ba, ba 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 ba. That's a fantastic piece. <laughs> when are we going to play that again? Oh, I don't know. We don't have a full section, but no. even if we would, we wouldn't be allowed to play it. Maybe. No, no, no. We're we're working on it. If any of you, we have a uh, two jobs free. We've just had to cancel one audition for Principal Horn because obviously, you no, know, it's like the Olympics. Everyone was preparing for it and not knowing if the audition was going to take place, so we put them out of their misery. <laughs> But we're having, we'll, we'll have them as soon as we can. Um, a good one here, um, actually quite a few people are writing with some really good things. Um, Alexandra says, Thomas Justline advised me to start with Mozart 3 and it will serve me for life for many things. It helps. Yeah, start with something that, that you feel you can play, that you can put some music into. Um, amateur Shipping asks, for solistic passages, what happens if the teacher finds the student's in interpretation different from the teacher's himself? That's a good question because we're, we're confronted with that a lot. I, I usually recommend people, I mean, the thing is like in Mozart 3, class 1, whatever, I first of all recommend the people sometimes because they have practiced it for years and to not put the music because then I see some music that has like an, an input of 15 teachers in it mm -hmm. and you can't hardly see the notes anymore because there's so much like in it. Mm. Um, I would get to a master class with a fresh copy. Yeah, ah, that's just, a good idea. Yeah. Just with a fresh copy. So that, that would be ideal to say, ah, oh, this is what Stefan Dorst thinks. And I can, you know, then, then you have it and you can agree or disagree. It's not about, it's not about that we all have to agree on my interpretation. No, no you have to, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I do if I play second horn to him. Yeah, of course. <laughs> no. um. No, no, we always find a, yeah. a good mix. Um, th there's some really great people from all over the world. Hattie Yu is watching our academist. Hattie, hello, nice to see you. I hope you're okay. Oh, she's Wait, in Korea, look. isn't she? she? I don't know. I think she's here, actually. Is she in Korea? Are you in Korea? Tell us. Um, Tell us. Radigundas is watching in Brazil, and Juan Landi is watching from Ecuador. He's a great salsa dancer. Um, and uh, and Vero Cor Cornista from Bolivia. I mean, really, we we love oh. that. Yeah, we love that you're watching. You're going to do something with the Corona horns soon, aren't you, Stefan? Yeah, it should be today. But I I, I figured I was just too much because I have okay. a bit of online teaching yeah. also at the same time. The Monday is usually very busy, so I try to do it on a different day and let's yeah. see if that okay. works. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm sure it will. It's fun. I had fun with the corona, corona horns. It sounds I'm, I'm a bit sort of hesitant to call anything Corona because what's going to happen when it's no more Corona, we'll have to change all the names. But for us as Cornistas, it's quite good. <laughs> corona Cornistas. Cornistas. Um, so it's great to see you all. If you're on Facebook, write in and tell us where you're watching from. And um, if you have any juicy questions about masterclass tips, then get over onto the website and write them in for us here so that I can see them. Stefan, we're talking about repertoire, um, that we shouldn't, that we're happy if the students don't choose, firstly, pieces that they don't know very well and that we feel we have to teach them. Um, that, that's a little bit troublesome in a, in a masterclass situation because the audience gets bored, you know. Um, then also not too difficult, not the most difficult piece you ever, you ever chose. 
Um, I'm always happy if I'm in a masterclass and I can do something that helps people. So if, if they bring, you know, all the high, if they bring in all these high stuff, I'm like, okay, maybe ask Stefan about that, but I'm happy to, to, you know, look at, look at the low horns and, and things like that. Yeah, here we go. Right. Let me... yeah. Oh, sounding good. Looks a bit like that fish that you flattened over the weekend. And that sounded like the Brussels sprout. The fish, the fish, I didn't flatten the fish. The fish is a flat fish. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you'd flatten it. No, it's a, it's a turbo. That is, that I is was like imagining a, a, you stamping it. No, okay. it's a shine boat. That if, actually is a flat if, fish. If, if you just joined, eyes. that's the fish that, we're talking you can about. See, okay, you can see it has two eyes on the top side. So oh, I couldn't have. It, <laughs> it lives on the ground of the sea, so... What do you think? Should we do a horn hangout live from Stefan's kitchen? He can show us some good recipes. I think that's a great idea. Um, Ken Fisher is watching in Ann Arbor. Hi, Ken. Lovely to see you. Peter from Troy, Alabama. Kylie White um, from Everston now. Um, she's written something very interesting. She said she was able to ditch beta blockers for all situations. Good for you. Thanks to Don Green's centering techniques. It's a great, great way to relax muscle. muscle blah, 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 blah. It's a great way to relax muscles and connect with your breath. And she hasn't had a bad performance since starting it. Global round of applause for Kylie. Bravo. That is really oh, no, thank fantastic. You. Right. Um, there are a lot of different uh, techniques to help. And anything you can find that works for you that's not tablets or alcohol um, is great. And Don Green has a wonderful cent centering exercise. Uh, Andrew Bain taught me about that because he'd studied with with where you very quickly bring everything in. And I sitting next to Andrew playing second horn to him, you know, you get on stage, you dump your water, you know, you do your music stand. And then I turned to him to say something. And he was like, and then he just was back. I was like, okay. And I asked him about it later. He said, that's what he was doing. So um, I, I take that. So you can't talk to me always before book now for it's really why. annoying. It's really annoying. <laughs> so that's why. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Shut if you see Stefan on the on the digital concert hall and he's going, then it's an anti Sarah technique. Okay, got it. <laughs> but that's really good news. So I I ordered the book The Mindful Musician, which uh, Dinka Vlatkovic told us um, that she really enjoyed, uh, and I ordered it and I'm plowing through it. It's a lot of text, but really good things in there as well. The inner game of music, um, you know, Don Green. There's a lot of stuff out there. But Kylie, we're really happy to hear that. Carrie Smelser says I knew a teacher who would have a student put a wallet under the arms of the armpit to force the, sh the shoulders down in order to relax. <laughs> I've, I've got a, a wallet here. What have I got? A parrot. Oh, yeah. Let's take a book. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Try it out. Yeah, try it out. Why not? That's pretty good. The parrots in here because I did a, a webinar with the National Children's Orchestra of Great Britain um, just now, and they they yeah well they like the parrots. Yeah, they liked it. Um, that's a, that's a great that that's great. That's that's great. Good. A wallet under the to keep your shoulders down. Okay. I just have the feeling that might be a bit. I worry you, about that a little bit, yeah. actually, to be honest, because I'd worry more about dropping the wallet than than playing. But maybe. But <laughs> well, that's good. Then maybe yeah, so you played better. It's for like... some, for something, yeah. Why not? Yes, recipe for success from Stefan Dora's kitchen. I think we're going to get that. <laughs> um, Heidi says the fearless performance workshop with Jeff Nelson. Yeah, he's done a lot of that. That's really good. Um, Michael D wants to know about fermenting blueberries. Now this has nothing to do with the masterclass. But maybe... <laughs> this is going to be the kitchen thing, but actually it needs a week, so it's not uh, it's not something you can do in a masterclass from my kitchen. It's is, it's is a that process. healthy? Is that healthy? Very healthy. Very healthy. Okay. All the fermented right. things like okay. kimchi and yeah. Good. Everything. Cynthia says, take every opportunity to play for someone, which is exactly what we just uh, suggested. Churches, a friend, neighbors, a little bit difficult at the moment. Try simple, simple pieces like Freudus's prunes. Absolutely. Do you know the prunes? Freudus, for, it's, not, it's, not fermenting, it's not fermented prunes. Oh, I was thinking Freudus <laughs> prunes. It sounds Can like somebody a nice... write in the chat and explain what Freudus's prunes are? Because uh, okay. Sounds like a nice Norwegian recipe. Yeah. <laughs> do you ask, Lewis says, do you ask students in masterclasses about their education and their teachers? I've got a comment on that, but I ask you that first, Stefan. Um, 
I actually, because I, I usually don't know where they come from, or sometimes I know because it's the university there or whatever, but I'm always interested in like how long they play or the instrument. That That is sometimes an interesting just fact to know that if someone plays already for 10 years or just for four years and how old, what grade they are in, that is always, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to know that. I always want to know that, especially what, who's, who's their teacher or where they studied, because that has a lot to do with the style that they play. And of course, it's not our right to change the style of someone's playing. You know, everyone has their own musical ideas. And if they've been brought up this way, then that's great. Um, of course, you know, just because we want something one way, we play something one way doesn't mean it's the right way for everybody. It's just the way we prefer it. And that's what we can teach because that's what we like. Uh, but just because we're in the Berlin Phil doesn't mean that's the end of it. That ha that's how it just has to be. Unless you play in our section, and then that's how it, how it has to be. <laughs> no, that's very different ways to play, and so and that yeah. should stay like yeah. this. It's, what I find stressy is when the teacher is in the audience, and then you see there's some huge problem that you're just dying to change, and the teacher's sitting right there. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, it is. It's really not not that easy. Um, uh, Alexandra just said she, she remember in the Eric Terwilliger horn hangout, a master class. He does warm ups and stretches. Those really help against. They make me calm. They're really good ones. They're, they're anything that. And you yeah. gave me a really good tip, Stefan. Do you remember when we were about to go on stage? I think it was that week where um, where they changed the transposition of a of a of a piece that we were thought it was going to be in a. Basso and all of a sudden, no, B Basso and all of a sudden it was, oh, it was B Alto. B Alto and, was and, and we were waiting to go on stage and I was sitting down. Doing, yeah. Yeah, it, like, it ruined oh, my week, I tell you. Yeah, I was Simon. sitting down. Was hiding thing. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a hiding thing. And yeah. Simon came up on the first rehearsal and was like, uh, guys, did you know that this is a that was B scary. Alto? That was really yeah, Not even B flat, B oh. Alto. Oh, that was. But I was sitting down doing some breathing exercise and you said, get up, walk around. Now, why did you tell me that? No, because you just, you know, otherwise you go on stage and your heartbeat goes up and you're not prepared for that. If you're a little, you know, if you make your body uh, work a bit before you go on stage, that usually helps already because, you know, that, that kicking in nervousness with heartbeat and, and this is, um, you can avoid that. Yeah. It really helps to stay a little bit moving around and on your feet before you do something, you know, and that's hard if it's a master class and someone's been sitting down and waiting, you know, an hour and a half for their turn. That, that, that's hard. So I always recommend the people to go out or encourage people to go out like 15 minutes before they have to play to, to just play some notes, although yeah, they yeah. just come out of the come out of the cold. I love the masterclass situation where you're trying to teach someone on stage and you hear the guy warming up really loud for who's playing who's coming next. So that's a masterclass no no don't warm up loud right in front of the door before you go on. <laughs> um, Mimi from Mississippi, hello Mimi from Mississippi, that's fun to say, said she saw a Carl Leister clarinet masterclass which she had the student play standing on one foot to take her mind off the nerves. Now I'm not quite sure if horn on one foot is a good idea but this is a technique that's in the inner game of music. Here we go. He's going to show us for it. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I don't know. No, I'm not quite uh, sure. But but it's it's sometimes a really good thing to just take the attention away. For example, I've had people try to play some fast passage in, is in, a, in, a, in a master class and they've been really thinking about their fingers and I've just sort of tapped the end of their, of their, of their elbow and suddenly they think about the end of their elbow and their fingers work. You know, it's, it's an inner game of music technique. It's just taking the awareness somewhere else and getting your brain to just do what is practiced rather than just going, oh, I'm so nervous. Oh. You know, <laughs> Stefan, I have a question. Sure. What should people wear for master classes? Um, um, no, no. Should one get yeah. dressed up in jackets? Oh, I think, I or? think whatever, whatever you, I think it is it is a part usually is performing so i would i would not you know maybe i'm not really dress up in a, in a suit and a tie but i would like also take something that is like a bit nicer and just so that you feel it's a special moment for yourself so i, I like that totally agree with that totally agree with that 
Now you've disappeared very large on my screen. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> there are really people watching everywhere. Everyone wants the food. They really like that idea. So I think Stefan, that's what we're going to be doing very, very soon. We'll have to organize that. Um, John has asked, do you have a, a couple of, on, on the Facebook, do you have a, have I seen it here? No, here it is. Do you have a couple of points, themes that always come up in masterclasses? Things you find yourself saying possibly more frequently than you'd like to. Absolutely. Yep. 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 This one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can make you can make competitions on that. Yeah. Yeah, Stefan's actually sometimes I've seen him in master classes in a Japan clinic where we get a lot of little girls in the clinics, and this girl wasn't breathing, and Stefan blew on her, and she almost fell over. It was she you. <laughs> that that was because of the garlic. That was probably because of the garlic. Maybe it was Korea. She went, <laughs> and this girl went. Yeah, exactly. So that is definitely a thing. We say in every masterclass, use your air. So Stefan, if someone is saying that in a masterclass to you, use your air and you're scared, we've used, we've, we've talked about feeling your head being pulled up, your shoulder blades back to open this up. Are there any other tips you can think of, like immediate fixes that you can use in a masterclass situation? Um, don't put your legs too much together so that you have a very stable standing like that. I'm sorry, mum. Yeah, my, 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 my Don't just tell, we can, can tell the story. That's a nice tell story. the story now. Um, in the interval of a digital concert hall live broadcast, my mum sent us a text um, and she said, why are you all playing with your legs wide open? She said it didn't look no, I think it was especially for you. For me, okay. She said, your legs are always so wide open, you know, and because, you know, I sit properly, I sit up straight and I'm not, I don't count, I can't support if my legs are touched, if my knees are touching. And so, so we giggled a little bit about that. And, uh, and then after the concert had finished for the, for the, um, for the applause, Stefan said, come on, everybody put your legs together. So legs together. the whole horn section like this with our legs together. And exactly in that moment, the camera was on the horns. There we go. <laughs> the camera was on the horns and my mom saw it. So she was very proud. So we always make this joke about having our knees together. So, um, yeah. No, yeah, just so that you really have a stable stand. I, I see a lot of people then like, going on one foot and the other foot goes like up or like taps on. I think that sometimes, you know, if you really want to, to feel very comfortable and stable, just first of all, stand stable too. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that masterclass really sounds like a doctoral dissertation defense. <laughs> I tell you, it is. Why do we do them? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Good. I mean, I, I think, Stefan, that those are so many tips. And I think uh, Handsome Tim needs to get to bed. And we said we'd do a short one today of 30 minutes. And it's now 33 minutes. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. see. So any I more think, questions? No, yeah, any that's more nothing. Questions? I mean, there's, been, there's, there's a little repertoire. What would you suggest horn players to play in a master class with a non-horn playing guest, like a trumpet professor? That's a, that's a good or question, like, actually. Like John Mitchell, who plays the viola, is always watching. John Mitchell, you hear that shout out? I told Stefan that there's a fellow viola player who always watches our horn hangouts in New York, John Mitchell, and Stefan is a closet viola player, as we all know now, and I'm still waiting for him to play the viola, and he keeps having excuses like, that's not my viola. Um, yeah. No, I play the viola for the fish, what I'm going to cook in the open, yeah, cooking masterclass or something. Um, oh my goodness, I'm getting excited Ooh. about this. <laughs> I'm getting excited about this. Um, yeah, but that's a good question about what should you play in a masterclass for a non-horn playing professor. Play something which, you know, well, you can talk about music because the guy is not going to start talking about lip trills and low horn embouchure if he's a trumpet player, you know. Or, don't you agree? No, absolutely. I mean, that's, this, is, this is why I was saying take pieces that you know well and you might, you know, play without the music and then, you know, and then get tips musically and not only, you know, some, yeah, some input. Yeah. What I love about our Horn Hangout audience, really, I adore you all, as you know, but they come up, they, they're offering advice to everyone else. And I love this because this, it's, it's, it's a hangout. It's not just me and Stefan, it's all of you. And that's what we love. And, um, and Will, Will Sizemore just said, if you squat, oh, Stefan's left the room. It's not about- No, 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 I'm here. I'm just getting if the information. If you squat for a second before playing, standing, it makes you feel more grounded or good posture. Come on, Stefan, we're gonna squat. 
Ready? And then, oh, I think I'd probably fall over. <laughs> it's hot. Did you? It's short stay here in Berlin. Yeah. Okay, so the next time we see someone squat in our masterclass, then we'll know. But actually, that might be very, very good advice. That was actually just pumping this oh, chair up. That's, your... <laughs> that's not fair. I try to squat. <laughs> good. There are so many, so many good things. So thank you for all your, if you have, if any of you have any advice for any of us, write it in. We want to know. I want to know something. Um, you can think about this and write it in the chat after. Which has been your favorite horn video during lockdown? There has been there have been so many. I've seen the the craziest things. Have you seen lots of them, Stefan? No. Which ones would you recommend Stefan to look at? You know, I saw I saw a Bohemian Rhapsody the other day. I I saw something from the Greatest Showman on Earth. Um, we did we did uh, Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. I feel so guilty that I don't do anything because I'm just. What not, do you mean? You I mean, not, not. You're on the horn hangouts every day. Come on. Yeah, no, but no, I'm not playing. I'm not doing multi, multi channel recordings. And I'm the just others, like. The others can do the multi channel recordings, and we need you on the horn hangouts. So. I oh, okay, perfect. Let's, oh. let's stay like that. Okay. So thank you for that. Let us know which ones your favorites were, because my favorite orchestral thing was the, the Radio de France. They did an amazing version. Philharmonic. Okay, yeah, Philharmonic Radio de France. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, sure. Charlie Chaps and, oh, that was just very, a, very nice. Really the best. So, um, yeah, Tony Smell says, thanks again. It's fun to hang out with you. It's fun to hang out with you, too. We'll be back on Wednesday. Now, I think I'm trying to persuade Andrew Bain to do his warm up live on Wednesday, but it's six o'clock in the morning in L.A. And it means all his students. Are, well, no, it will be nine o'clock where most of his students are. We're working on that. We'll see. It's quite fun to warm up with. Andrew has this system on Zoom where everyone mutes themselves and one student says one exercise and then we all play. It's quite cool. I've joined in on, it's not chaos like most warm ups, you know, like ours. <laughs> like the horn room before we played. We haven't quite sussed it out yet, but um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Keep a look out on the website and we'll let you know what's coming on Wednesday. But uh, for now, have a look. Yeah. Any any funny story from Masterclass or from you know that something? would be good yeah yeah um, I have one we, oh, we you had have one, then? yeah no that was actually Masterclass was like a horn you know a horn class concert and we had four of my friends students at the time uh, or two and they were like trying to perform a horn quartet on Wagner tubers and they actually tried to tune and the first one split it the tuning you know, and the second one split and the third one and fourth couldn't play anymore it was just laughing <laughs> and then they tried to start they couldn't they couldn't play they're just like <laughs> all the time saying so, oh teacher said up down uh, come on and <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, Wagner tuba is actually quite a funny thing. I would not want to play a Wagner tuba. Oh, a... we can do a Wagner tuba hangout. We could, but we'd have to go and get them from the Philharmonie. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Wagner tuba only is fun if you play it by four people. It's yeah. It's fun yeah. if you do it alone. No, no that, that's fair yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll have the hang up um, up on, on YouTube very, very soon. So you, if you've just joined, which I've just seen some people just joining now, you've missed all the great uh, masterclass tips and uh, we'll have some more. It's yeah, we just love to hear from you. So let us know what horn videos you like to watch and let us know any funny masterclass stories. And if you have any tips for anyone else, somebody was asking about online mic uh, microphones for online teaching. We're happy to know that. Any advice you have for us, put it in there. Have you got yours yet, Stefan? I've got mine. The problem is um, that on the website where I'm teaching on, it doesn't realize it. It doesn't realize it as an input, but oh. it's a very good microphone. Yeah. It's, um, oh, ah, that's yeah. There's a little one, height one. It's a little one, but it's really, it's really heavy and nice, and gives nice sound. So um, ah. I'm looking forward to. It. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. But I mean, the thing is, the quality of the sound you like record also online on the teaching is sometimes it's not very good. So I focus on articulation and things like this, okay. because also you can't really judge the dynamic. If someone really plays soft, they usually the software goes up and puts it higher and it's not the best thing. But I keep my pupil busy in giving them a symphonic 
art, you know, a big symphonic work or a symphonic poem every week. So if you didn't oh, have just the doors on play with the pro. So get oh, on yeah, that. but also my no, it's my 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 usual students. That oh, I your usual today. ones as well, yeah. Yeah, they get they get like oh, so in three days we we meet again and you play Mahler three for me. So and then they have to listen to it and have to you know. And I must say, I loved the hangout with party, the uh, horn hangout party on Friday, where every single horn player brought, even all of you online, brought your three, three of your favorite pieces with absolutely no horn in it. I've been listening to those all weekend. I really thank everybody for those, those solutions. Vorjac, uh, Schumann, string quartets. I mean, really fantastic stuff. Um, really, really. Schubert, string quartets. And what, what else did we have? We had uh, string quintet. Song. We had Schubert quintet. Everything. Really great, yeah. great things. And also um, Bill Evans. Oh, uh, did you did you watch the Miles Davis? Yes, we did. Thank you for that. The Miles Davis film. Watch that. It's incredible. Yeah. Get out of horn sometimes and, and, and listen to some other music. It's really, really good for the whole horn is great, but non horn music is pretty good for the soul, too. <laughs> Amen. See you on Wednesday. Same time, same place. Bye. See you. Bye bye. bye.